What up, players? It's Warboss Tay back up in this mug. Welcome to a video of the Kingsman unboxing. It's uh, the Kings, the Kingsman, Kingsman. <laughs> it's the Kingsman. Uh, all right, let's get serious. Half a frame here from the Kingdom Death Monster 1.5 box set. You've got weapons. You've got a sword and a scabbard that goes on the hip. You've got one leg there that uh, attaches separately at the knee. You've got the other leg that's half of the bottom um, bottom half of the body, you've got the torso, which also includes the flowy cape. The head comes in two pieces, plus the plume, and you've got a gauntleted fist there on the side. So, I love this model. He's posed uh, with most of his weight leaning on one foot, and so what that does is, uh, it's kind of like leaning back, most of his weight is on one leg, so that causes his hips to kind of counterbalance and his upper body to twist to accommodate the balance in sculpture and in art that is uh, called contrapposto or counterpose. If, um, if if I totally butchered that word, I'm sorry. I am still a <laughs> novice in uh, the ways of art history. But uh, it, as you can see, it makes the model look dynamic while also looking relaxed. He doesn't look like he's... He doesn't have to have his foot on a rock, in other words, or uh, he doesn't have to be holding his a halberd up in the air doing a, a mighty man pose. He's uh, perfectly posed as it is if you can put the pieces together and I used Model Master Plastic Cement because it really uh, helped me to get a little bit of a tentative bond with the pieces while I'm posing it and it allowed me to kind of feel out what pose I wanted, how I wanted to angle the different limbs and the head. I wanted the head to be kind of looking down into the side almost like it's kind of cocked quizzically like uh, like a dog or like a creature, like in any kind of animal that is curiously looking at something it's about to kill. And like I said, it's a monster. You put it on one of these larger bases and it almost looks like it's too small for the base, but um, it, it really looks good when you put it next to the smaller based hero models. This is what it looks like scale-wise next to a primary space marine. And as you can see, it's a little bit taller, but uh, not as bulky. And most of the Kingdom Death models, they're scaled in such a way where the uh, the limbs aren't big, they, they're not, um, they don't look like oversized and cartoony, they look very well proportioned and very exquisitely detailed. There's so much detail packed into these miniatures from the sculpt, each of the lines on the feather plume on the helmet to the hands, the hand motif, again, carrying on from the hand, the king's hand, the, the hand model, the monster model. Um, you've got the hands reaching around the breastplate to clasp the, the face, the mouth. You've got hands coming down the side of the helmet. Uh, there are, I believe there are hands on the backs of the gauntlets. And there are, I think, hands coming up the legs. So as you can see, most of the models that uh, follow, or most of the miniatures and the characters that follow this, whatever king model or character in Kingdom Death, they, they have a lot of that recurring hand motif with their armor. So I was thinking to tie this guy into the King's hand model that I had painted earlier and also to kind of make him his own uh, individual, give him his own individual character and flair while making him cohesive with that model. If you're going to stand them next to each other in the bookcase, I thought, what, what can I do with the colors, color-wise, to make it interesting, but also make him stand out? And so here we go. Let's take a look at what I did. Uh, Assembly-wise, there wasn't really anything noteworthy to speak of. There were the usual mode lines that you'll find in the normal places, like down the center of the halberd staff um, on both sides of the sword and uh, on most of the armor like uh, down the center of the legs. So what you just, uh, the easiest thing to do, what you do is take your hobby knife and use the back, don't use the blade, but use the hobby knife, uh, the back part of it, the flat part, to just scrape away at those mold lines. And there you go. So I spray primed the model in white. When I use a white primer, it helps the colors that you paint on top of it pop out even better, and uh, it's, it gives it a, a brighter, appearance and I decided to go with an overall silver theme for the armor but then 
a lot of uh, red, white, and blue. So the dark blue was basically Incubi Darkness shaded up with Stegodon Scale Green. The red was Corn Red, then layered up with Mephiston Red, shaded with Agrax Earthshade, and then you can see on the back of the cape, which we'll do some close-up pictures of in a bit, I uh, highlighted up with Mephiston Red and then added in uh, progressive amounts of Cadian Flesh Tone to create a very creamy highlight that doesn't turn it uh, pink. There's a little bit of yellowish in there, but it doesn't also make it look orange. And yeah, that's basically it. Retributor Armor is a great gold paint. It pops up really nicely against the lead belcher and it creates a very nice burnished uh, yellowy gold effect. I've been looking at some other different products from AK Interactive to see what else I might be uh, interested in trying out gold-wise or uh, even with any of the metal. It looks like they've got some interesting products out, but uh, for now, I, I enjoy using the Games Workshop paints mostly, and let's see what else I can tell you about how I painted the guy. I, I really wanted the trim of his cape to stand out, so uh, in order to do that, I used a Rackharth Flesh, which is a nice bright uh, beige color. I shaded it with Agrax Earthshade. I did the same thing for the feathers, and then when I highlighted back up, I used um, short little dabs on each of the little fur clumps on the cape. And then for the feather plumes, I tried to use very uh, consistent um, vertical or, or horizontal strokes so that you create the illusion of the feather plume going in the same direction. So those are the pictures of the model uh, as was. Here's the glamour shot, uh, the glamour photo shoot that I did of the models. And I kind of bumped up the contrast. I took a picture of it against the uh, this black background here. So the colors are going to look a little bit different than they do in real life, which uh, if you really wanted to see them again, you could just rewind the video a couple minutes. But I think they look great. Their studio, these studio quality photos really show off all of the different textures and all of the different surfaces. I used a wood grain on the wooden spear, which is very simply done by painting the spear itself with... Um, Steel Legion Drab, shading with Agrax Earthshade, and then highlighting back up with Carrack Stone in very thin lines. You can see it a little bit better here. Um, if you want to go for a more of a reddish wood, you can use Mornfang Brown as the base instead of Steel Legion Drab. If you want to go for a darker uh, wood grain, you can start with Rhinox Hide and then highlight up with maybe Rackarth Flesh. But um, I'm really, really pleased with how this model came out. Leave me a comment down below, hit that like button. Uh, get some other people to take a look at this video if you had a good time. And we will be doing many more Kingdom Death videos. I have also got some great videos lined up for the Primaris Commission and the Elder Oathway Commission. So I hope you stick around for that. Thanks again for watching. And uh, it's, gr it's great to be back. It's always great to be back filming again and uh, sitting at the painting table. Latest players!